In the Chola country at that time the art of dance and song was very flourishing. Dance and drama developed together. Tanjore has produced many outstanding dramatists. Karuvarth Devar, who lived on that day, Shiv Nisich Selvar, wrote about the city of Tanjore in his songs in Jishut. One of his songs describes that. A sign of the flourishing of theatre in Tanjore, there were many theatre roads. Of all the drama roads, the best drama road was inside the emperor's palace. Artists who envisioned new plays lived in Tanjore. Prior to that, stories from the Puranic epics were used as dramas, but for some time the Tanjore dramatists had turned their attention to another field and found success. They dramatized the stories of legendary players. The heroic stories of those who were a little ahead of their time were also dramatized. Where else are there such warriors like those born in the Chola dynasty? Therefore, they dramatized the histories of Chola kings like Karakal Valavar, Vijayalaya Chola, Parantaka Devar etc. On the occasion of Navaratri, the heroic drama of the Chola kings was held in the emperor's palace for three days. Thousands of people gathered to witness the plays in the palace grounds opposite the picturesque Natok Road. The palace pender was a separate place for sitting arranged with carved pillars under a blue canopy. Under it, queens, princesses and their intimate friends sat and watched the play. At that time Nandini came and sat near Kundave Devi. Some of the other girls didn't like it, but they kept it to themselves and couldn't do anything else. Who would have the courage to bear the wrath of the great Pavuvatere Pavuvar Ila Irani? The rest of us are the only ones who show respect and respect to the brat as a young brat? Parantaka Devar, the third of the three plays about the Chola kings, is the best. On that day, a commotion arose and grew among the people who saw the play. G.O.P. Paraksari Paranthakar, the son of Sundara Chola, who ruled the Chola country until then, excelled in Virapugaz. He ruled for about 46 years. During his time the Chola empire expanded and spread. His command extended from the Elash country to the Tungapathray River. Many battles were fought, it was a huge success. He got the title of Madurai and Elamungonda Gob Paraksari Varmar. Thilich Chidambaram won gold for Kyram Balat and became famous. Towards the end of his life there were some defeats and the kingdom shrank. But his heroism is not the only thing that has declined. The final great battle was fought at Thakolam with a king named Kanaradava who invaded from the dual zone in the north with an army as huge as the sea. At this time Rajaditha, the eldest son of Paranthera, a valiant warrior who had never seen this Indian continent was the commander of the army. After defeating Kanaradava's army, he gave up his life while remaining on the elephant and went to the heroic heaven. The soldier's arrow-pierced corpse was brought to the town intact. They brought it to the palace. Parantaka Chakraborty and his demigods wept over the body of Vera Purumaha, who had sacrificed his life to protect the country. From behind the curtain, the Asari voice said, Regret. Regret. Prince Rajaditha is not dead, every Chola countryman lives with a temple in his heart. He shouted. The play ends with this final scene. The soldier's arrow pierced corpse was brought to the town intact. They brought it to the palace. Parantaka Chakraborty and his demigods wept over the body of Vera Purumaha, who had sacrificed his life to protect the country. From behind the curtain, the Asari voice said, Regret. Regret. Prince Rajaditha is not dead, every Chola countryman lives with a temple in his heart. He shouted. The play ends with this final scene. The soldier's arrow pierced corpse was brought to the town intact. They brought it to the palace. Parantaka Chakraborty and his demigods wept over the body of Vera Purumaha, who had sacrificed his life to protect the country. From behind the curtain, the Asari voice said, Regret. Regret. Prince Rajaditha is not dead, every Chola countryman lives with a temple in his heart. He shouted. The play ends with this final scene. The people enjoyed this play full of heroic events in the previous generation. The reason for the uproar among the congregation was that during the great wars of Parantaka Deva's time, he had two minor princes as his companions. One is the small prince of Kajumbalur, 
another is the small land king of Pavurg. Both of them were related to the Chola dynasty. Those who gave women and bought women. Both of them came to help Paranthagar like two arms. It was impossible to tell who was right and who was left. Parantaka Chola used to honor both of them like his two eyes. Is it not possible to tell which of the two eyes is high and which is low? He was the helper of Paranthagar, the great father of the now ruling Palavatarayas. His name is Palavatarayar Kandanamudanar. The performers of Parantaka Deva's play had rehearsed very carefully without teaching any difference between the two minor kings. Both of them pretended to be well known for their bravery. They specifically pointed out that Parantaka Deva honored both the warriors equally. However, it soon became clear that the audiences who saw the play did not have such an attitude. It came to be known that some of them belonged to the Kajumbalar party and others to the Palyavar party. A section of the congregation cheered when the Kajumbalar leader's heroic deed was shown on stage. A few more cheered when the hero of Pavar came on stage. At first the competition was small, it grew bigger and bigger. In the middle of the play Navalo asterisk novel. The chant of the congregation rose and echoed in all four directions. Asterisk on this day, to show enthusiasm and support, people used to shout naval low naval. As if cheering. These competing chants in the assembly gave Kundave Devi a boost. As the slogan of the Kajumbalar party grew louder, he urged the Kajumbalar princess beside him, See, Vanathi. Your party is now stronger. She said. The guileless sky will also express her joy over it. When the slogan of the party from Pavur got stronger, the younger brat looked at Nandini and said, Rani. Now your party is strong. She said. But Nandini's face showed that this did not excite her. When a match like this took place, people engaged in it openly and chanted, and the younger bratty instigated it further, and the little girl Vanathi and herself were treated as equals in one mass and Nandini's inner heart grew many times over. Many times I wondered if I should just get up and leave. Rani Pavur was gritting her teeth, thinking that if she did that, she would be conceding her defeat by stunning the match. Kuntava was observing all this. She came to know Nandini's state of mind from her facial expression as if looking in a mirror. But something else was a mystery to the younger Brady. When the Pandya king was defeated in the war, he went to the Sri Lankan king and surrendered, and without seeking help from the Sri Lankan king, he left the Manamakudam and Ratna Aram and fled to Chera country, etc., when the audience showed immense enthusiasm. But only Nandini's face reflected the agony of heart. The younger Brady wondered what the reason was. Thought we'd have a little chat. Is the emperor unable to watch this wonderful drama with us? Hasn't he also achieved these things that Patnar achieved in his time? If only father gets well. She said. Nandini said, his body is getting better. His rich daughter has also come here. If the herb comes soon from Sri Lanka, the emperor will definitely get better. The herb comes from turmeric. What is it? Said Kundave. You ask as if you don't know. Did the old doctor send someone to bring herbs from Sri Lanka? Did I hear that they helped you? Is that a lie? She bit her lip with her crooked teeth. Although the row of teeth was as beautiful as a thorny knee, it made the bitten lips hurt. Fortunately novel is novel. The speech was interrupted as a roar arose at that moment. The play ended after wishing long life to Sundara Chola's cruelty and wildness, long life and government. The congregation dispersed and went home swaying with joy. The goddesses of the minor kings also went with their retinues. Later, Charkavarthi Vanamadavi and the rest of the courtiers left for the Kalarkula deity Durga Yaman temple. Malayaman's daughter had fasted many times so that Sundara Chola could recover. He used to visit Durga Yaman temple frequently and offer prayers. Navaratri is a nine-day night and special pujas are performed to Durga Yaman. Sacrifices were made to seek the emperor's health. Every night Maharani used to go to the temple and return after Artha Jama Puja. Many senior members of the palace will accompany the queen to the temple. It is not customary to take young women to the Durga shrine. 
sunnids sometimes come on the priests and dance like Agra. They tell stories of curses. Young women are not going to get scared. But to the younger bratty, you'll be scared. Who has the courage to stop by saying that? On those nine days she used to go to Kundavam Durga temple with her mothers and offer prayers to the goddess. On these occasions, Vanati had to stay alone in the palace. On the night of Paranthak Devarnatak, Vanatha's heart was full of excitement. She was proud to see the heroic deeds done by her ancestors on the arena stage. Along with Sri Lanka memory also joined. The memory of his father who died in the Elam War and the memory of the prince who is coming to avenge his father's death arose incessantly. No sleep at all. The eyelids refused to close. If Ile Aprati returns from the temple and talks to him for a while about the day's play, then he may fall asleep, certainly not before that. Rather than just lying around, it seemed like a bit of a stroll in the palace loft. From the top you can see the whole of Tanjore. Even if you look at the Durga temple, you can see it, thinking like this, she got up from the bed and went. Vanati is new to the palace. However, finding a Manmatanila courtyard is not that difficult. What is the difficulty when there are long corridors, pillars on both sides and sleeping lights? The paths went round and round. Many of the lamps that had shone as Jokaj Jathai in the previous night had gone out. Some were surrounded by smoke and gave off a dim light. Here and there the nurses were lying down and sleeping on the road ramps. Not wanting to wake them up and ask for directions, Vanatha was going further. There seemed to be no end to those palatial paths. Suddenly a voice was heard. It sounded like a low, mournful voice. Vanati became Romanjanum, the body trembled. Her feet stayed where they stood. That dreaded voice again. Is there no one to save me? Aha! Uh -huh. Doesn't it sound like the voice of an emperor? I don't know what the danger is. Is it a physical disorder? Or maybe something else? Have all the senior priests like Charkavarthi gone to the temple? Will there be no one beside the emperor? But let's go and see. Vanati slowly picked up her shaky legs and walked a few more steps. The voice seemed to come from below. The route ended at that point. Looking down, a spacious hall was visible below. Aha! Isn't this the Sayanak Gram of the Emperor? Yes, there lies the Emperor, he is lying alone. And something else he laments, let's ask what? Sinner! I have killed you. It is true. I did not kill you on purpose, but I am responsible for your death. What do you want me to do about it? It has been twenty-five years. Are you still wandering around without me? Is there no peace for your soul? Will you not give me peace? Tell me what atonement I need to make. I will do accordingly. Leave me. Alas! Is there no one to free me from her cruelty? Everyone is looking for a cure for my physical illness. Is there no one to cure my mental illness? Go. 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 No, don't go. Stop. What shall I do? Go away. Don't torture me by being silent like this. Open your mouth and say something. These words fell on Vanati's ears like steel. Her scalp shook from the solace of her feet. She looked down unconsciously. She looked around the hall as far as her eyes could see. A figure was standing a short distance in front of the emperor. It looked like a half-formed figure of a woman. The remaining half of the pillar was hidden in shadow and smoke. As far as the figure is concerned, ah! Doesn't Palvur look like Ila Irani? What a nightmare! Is it delusional? No. It's true. Who is hiding behind that pillar? Not a big spoiler? No doubt. They are. After seeing Ila Irani of Pavur, the emperor is talking like that? It is true that killed you, screamed, what does that mean? Suddenly Vanati felt faint and dizzy. No, the palace itself began to revolve. See you. Don't be fooled here. Not together. Vanatha gritted her teeth and left. 
but the way back was not far. It seemed as if the room she was lying in would never come. Can't happen anymore, can't even stand. On her return from Kundave Prati Temple, she found Vanatha lying unconscious on the footpath not far from her room.